Hey, what's up guys? My name is Keenan, and welcome back to the Threefold Channel. Today, we're gonna give you guys a breakdown of a commercial shoot uh, that we filmed a while back. And uh, we're gonna show you guys how we made another alternate, a different kind of rotating rig. Uh, you'll see that later in the video, but it is so easy that I think anybody could make this rig and probably with simple things you can pick up at the hardware store or you maybe even have at home already. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but first things first, let's watch the ad. Let's see what we actually made. Hold up. Are you inviting rodents into your home using peanut butter and cheddar cheese? You might as well invite them to dinner. Ew. What if you never invited them in at all? These little pouches give our furry little friends no reason to visit in the first place. It's as easy as open the box, place the pouch, no more place the food, set the trap, snap your finger, reset the trap, wait around. Discover that you've been robbed. Only to start all over again. You see, Stay Away Rodent is made entirely from essential oils and plant fibers. While the pouch has a pleasant aroma to us, mice refuse to nest where their little sniffer is overwhelmed. Keep rodents away the naturally smarter way with Stay Away Rodent from Earthkind. A little more context to the ad. Earthkind's a, a really fun client of ours. The ability to tell a fun story with a, a product like this, uh, we saw a lot of potential. And part of the reason this ad is, is set up with the text and everything else and animations on screen is these were really designed to be social ads and we wanted something that was attention getting and kind of in your face as you're scrolling that is hard to turn away from once it actually shows up in front of you. So let's take a look at a couple of different things. One, we're gonna talk about the lighting, we're gonna talk about the rotating rig. Oh, the last thing we wanna talk about is uh, how we filmed that uh, cupboard scene. How did we do that? Him looking into a cupboard, how far back was that camera? Were you on the other side of the wall? Well, let me show you. So there we have our cupboard and we had uh, some extra cupboards. We actually built a kitchen in our studio that we used some Ikea cabinets for and we had a couple extra and we had basically a, a top of an Ikea cabinet, like the top part of the cabinet frame that didn't get used. We never actually put it up. And what we did is we filmed it on the island in the place that they were at. We put it up on some apple boxes and then we held it on both sides with a couple of C-stands and some cartellinis so that it wouldn't like jiggle because it was, um, it was pretty loose up there. We needed it to be really solid so he could open it with some authority. So that was one of the first camera tricks that we did. We went and scouted this location. We were pretty familiar with it. Uh, we had planned on filming the completely different direction. We were gonna film facing towards the windows of this place and have those in the background. Well, when we got there, the windows were causing us a ton of problems, a lot more problems than we were thinking we were gonna have, plus filming from 10 a.m. to uh, three or four that day, we knew that the window light was gonna be changing quite a bit um, based on the direction that our house was. So we're like, all right, scrap it. We gotta do something completely different. So we completely flipped the scene around. And when we did that, we still had two window problems, which was better than a gigantic, like 10 foot window problem. And so we trialed and aired a few things to make this work. We shot this actually in the middle of winter. It was very brown and white out there. So we, we debated just completely blacking them out. We debated uh, doing curtains and just having a little bit of light in. Uh, what we ended up doing is masking the whole window out and replacing it with uh, some blurred out image, you know, a blurred out image of a neighborhood that we found that was a, a free stock image or something somewhere. So that was one of the first things that we did because we tried covering up these rooms and we didn't want to cover them up because they did add a lot of depth to the space that we wanted to keep. Uh, and that, that was something that was pretty critical. So how is he lit? Let's show you guys the lighting breakdown. So he has a really big key light that is uh, right off to camera right side. 
But then we used uh, another Aperture 300D Mark II, I believe, with a light dome on it to kind of extend that key light from directly above the camera and uh, above him, kind of a similar lighting setup as I have right now, actually. And we use that to kind of extend it, make the key light a little bit bigger and make the ad just a little bit more high key. And uh, so the fall off wasn't so, so harsh. Our lighting in the background, we wanted to kill all the lights. We were getting some flicker. They were different color temperatures. We wanted to be able to control it. So we had another 300D Mark II that was shooting up into the ceiling and just bouncing and helping to fill the rest of the space in the background so that there was just a nice even light in the background and the cabinets weren't falling off too hard. Uh, and then there was actually a, a nice little hair light on him that we used a, a 60D with the uh, Fresnel and just uh, some barn doors to, to really uh, direct it. And right when he walked into place, it gave him just a little bit of kick uh, on the back uh, of his head, which turned out really great. So one of the other fun things uh, that Zach is gonna talk about a little bit, but um, the rotating rig that we made, and we have made a rotating rig once before, if you've seen that video. If not, you can see that in the description. Uh, but this rotating rig was a little bit different. Uh, we had this idea of you know, this guy that is kind of going crazy, setting these mouse traps, resetting these mouse traps, constantly never being able to catch these, uh, and he's almost turning into this uh, villainous guy because he's just going crazy trying to catch these mice. We wanted it to be close, we wanted it to be pretty small, a small form factor, so we actually just used a little bistro table that we had here at the studio, uh, and then we put a PVC tube on the outside of it. Okay guys, so here we have a rotating rig that kind of goes around a table for some product shots. It's a pretty simple design. We just took this uh, this uh, table here, we put a PVC pipe around it. This is uh, three inches. Uh, we strapped a cartolini to it with a grip head, a little boom arm action here, boom arm action here, and all of a sudden we've got ourselves a rotating rig. Check that out, perfectly centered. Smoother than we thought it would be, honestly. I think there's probably a better way to do this, but uh, this worked in our case. Not too shabby. Maybe we'll show you some shots of it right here. Or uh, or here. Or maybe there. Or there, there. One of the other things that we had, uh, one of the other cool things, we were actually able to set up this rig with a wireless monitor and have a director's monitor. It was a really wide uh, shot and we didn't actually need uh, anybody to pull focus. We didn't quite even have the room for it on the rig and with our setup, we did have to uh, finesse his his landing spot when he was uh, when he was coming into frame to make sure that we had focus, but it was really awesome to be able to have that wireless feed and be able to, you know, really review the shots because Zach was spending his time focusing on getting a really smooth move because this is uh, kind of a, a last minute build of this system. You know, it was not a, a perfect thing and definitely needed a little extra like love and care of the operator to make sure that it was as smooth as possible. So his time was spent focusing to make sure that the shot was as good as it could be. Uh, and then, you know, having a director's monitor, being able to coach uh, our talent uh, and, uh, and the performance that, that he was doing. So there you go. Uh, we zip tied it, we cartellinied it. Uh, it, was, it was strapped to that thing and not we don't think going anywhere, but uh, a pretty simple, pretty portable solution for a, a rotating rig if, uh, if you wanna give it a try. You just need a small uh, bistro table of some sort and lots of uh, uh, gold warms. Then the last scene, one of the last scenes that we filmed uh, was actually outside in the garage. And just to, to make the garage uh, scene a little bit more uh, a little bit more fun, we were actually able to use the 600D and we were able to punch some light through the garage windows and just give a, a nice little glare, nice little accent coming in from the garage windows that uh, was not there originally. It was uh, something that we were able to add after the fact and just uh, add a little bit more uh, style to what is a pretty, uh, pretty standard looking garage. All right, that about wraps it up for this video. If you guys have any comments, you know where to leave them. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Goodbye for now. There's nothing on this laptop. It's all a trick. Just kidding. It's real.
Or is it? Bye.